Let's go look a little bit closer on Terrain Editor. We won't go in, in very deep advanced mode right now, but we want to be feel familiar so we can modify Terrain, load some shapes and know how a Terrain Editor work. For this, we're going to create a high field terrain. And different between high field terrain and procedures that high field will creating resolution and shapes just when you create a terrain and when you move camera or positioning otherwise it does not do any changes on the resolutions or how many polygons there we'll look on those polygons in a second and as example right here we have a high field um, or um, procedure terrain and notice they're actually displaying for us how many polygons depending on how close camera so if i move my camera closer you can see right here we have high polygons around, a little bit less around, and as terrain going away, okay, let's take the camera move a little bit more out of here, we have way less polygons. So this is a kind of different. If I want to create my terrain with very high resolution details and camera close up, I probably will use procedures for this or I will need inside of my high field terrain increased resolution on polygons. So let's go edit and see how we can modify that stuff. So again, I will just select a uh, high field terrain and we can edit this by going through the object, edit object. We also can do same things, right click on terrain and go to edit object in the world browser, or we can right click on an object in any of views and go edit object. This will open for us the terrain editor. So in terrain editor, let's go over some of these buttons on the top. But before we go there, I want to just point again about the resolution. So right here, you'll notice we have a 256 by 256 resolution. If we're going and enable our grid, you can see this is resolution for our grid for the elements. If we increase, resolution you'll see we increase also amount of the polygons doubling and we can do again and it's increase again so this way we can increase quality or a details amount on the standard high field terrain I withdraw with this anytime when we increase the resolution that it will increase amount of memories it will use it and it's take longer time to render when we create it yeah, let's go to reduce down. Okay, we disable this and let's go look over. So for the first, we can create a new terrain and create new terrain is also just reassign different uh, random seed of, for the our fractal generations. So all of them procedural or high field are using the uh, function or fractal to drain the shape of this. So if I create new, you can see it will change its shape all the time because it's creating a new uh, seed for our functions that is responsible for shape of our terrain. Next, we have the save our terrain. So if you work with some terrain, you like it, you can save it and come back afterwards. We can export the terrain as well to use it in different applications. The other ones is terrain options that allowed us to create symmetrical skin and switch between high field and procedural. So when you create your terrain first time, you're not lock in just permanently to, for example, high field terrain. You can lock, you can switch to the procedural, make modification as in procedural terrain and go back to the high field. So you can switch between them or opposite. You can go to procedures, go to high field, do some effects on this and go back. Symmetrical, it will just create for us um, kind of underlay. So let's clip it. And if we look below right here, you can see when we create symmetrical, it'll just add, mirror it under. So if you want to create a floating island or some other effects, you may use it for this. But I don't know how often you will actually have a use for this usability. Okay, same skin, it won't create any, you'll just only overlay with the skin and some, for some export application, you may use that. Okay, let's remove our altitude. Next, we have it is our, um, positioning so if for example i zoom out too much or other things i want to restore so i can go click and come back as well we have a top view or we have perspective view 
The other buttons is allowed us to show entire scene. On this case, if I, for example, let's go click OK. If I have a house and I put this house on middle. Okay. And notice right there, it's kind of floating around. So I need it or kind of placing or I need it specially mold or create kind of my uh, terrain to apply to this. So we're going to editor. And I'll try to modify inside here. I have it no reference, ways, location, or other things. So this option, it's help us to showing light, uh, camera, and objects that are on a terrain. So in this case, I can move around. Okay, I can go ahead, select my brush, and I can actually mold it to fit this one. So just helpful overall to create um, more accurate look of ours. One with draw with this is that sometimes it may take um, time to render. Again, this is like almost fast render mode, live mode. And if we have it maybe ecosystem, or we have it more plants, more buildings, it will take longer time. So usually I use this to um, hide other objects and I use this for one object till I'm done with the modeling with a reference to specific objects, and I can disable this afterward. Okay, next option we already kind of preview when I was using, it is allowed me to show wireframe or reference how many polygons. This tool become quite a bit useful when I want to see also repository or how this polygons is layout, and we'll look at this in a second. But overall, it's nice reference of the resolution so I can visually see resolutions and even some areas maybe uh, does not distribute it properly. Okay, another one, it is show highlights. And this specular highlights, it's help just to see the reference of the lighting and enhance a little bit more 3D view and 2D space. We also have it show texture map. So uh, if we have any textures maps applied, it will show us location where they are applied because currently right now, as we preview terrain, it's preview with this map on the bottom. So we can change this, but overall it's using this specific map that it does not represent the current texture that we have it on our terrain. Um, other ones is the clipping planes, and this is help us as we work with our terrain. For example, if you notice right here, when I was moving, I was clipping. So, and I was clipping my terrain. And one thing to understand about clipping, so if I clip right here in my terrain editor, click OK, you'll notice the clipping is also happen on my terrain as well. So the editor will affect terrain itself. Okay, let's go to edit back. But also this clipping, it's help us to specific editing properties that may have. Let's go ahead, enable clipping plane. And you can see right here, my clipping plane from bottom. We can adjust from top one as well. Okay, but let's work with the bottom example. So if I bring my clipping plane to this area and I'm going to uh, modeling, enable constrain effect to the range to this clipping plane. And for example, right here, I'm just going to Effect, you can see the effect of this array raise up only apply with area with clipping. And it's very useful. For example, if I want to create effect like an ocean, I can set my clipping area here, use it my effect. Effect will apply only an area with not clip it, top or bottom. And I can use no grid, stones, pebbles, some other effect. And now let's remove it and you can see this effect was applied only to this area between two clipping planes. Okay, so let's disable our clipping areas. And you can see how with the different tools we can customize the, our terrain and mold it. So let's continue um, exploring in next um, tutorial.